welcome to my channel. My name is Betsy and today I want to talk about fungus gnats. I'm not even screwing around with introductions. We are getting down to business. We are going to seek and destroy. What are fungus gnats? Okay, well maybe you've seen these tiny little black flies hovering around your pot of plants and at first it's kind of like, oh, there's an annoying little fly, but then after a little while they get really out of hand and they're flying in your face while you're trying to drink your coffee in the morning and you're just trying to Fungus gnats have like a 28 day life cycle. The female fly lays her egg in the dirt, like your potting soil, like your potted plants, and then that develops into larva. The larva eats like organic matter within the soil. It develops into a pupa, and then eventually it develops into a fly, and then the whole vicious cycle starts again. The problem is that the larva can also feed on the roots of your plants, so they can start to harm your plants, especially if they get a little too out of hand. And trust me, they can get a little too out of hand. How do you get fungus gnats? Well, they might come in the potting soil that you bring home from the garden center. There might already be eggs and larvae in the potting mix that you don't see because you don't see the flies and then you put your plants in it and then, you know, the larvae hatch, they turn into pupa, they develop into flies and then those flies lay their eggs in other potted plants throughout your home and then suddenly you have an infestation. Or you might bring them home with other potted plants that you've purchased from the store or from other vendors those might have eggs in the soil. You bring them home, it's the same story. Or they might just fly in through your window, lay eggs in your pot of plants, and boom, you have an infestation. But you're probably not here to learn about the life cycle of the fungus gnat. You're here because you've got fungus gnats and you want to get rid of them. So how do you get rid of fungus gnats? Well, the main problem is that you have to destroy the life cycle. So you can get that like sticky trap stuff and put it in your potted plants, but it's gonna take longer for the infestation to finally die out because that only captures the adults. Whereas you still have eggs and larvae in the soil that are waiting to develop. And the other problem is that fungus gnats aren't very strong flyers. So a lot of them just spend their lives walking around on top of the soil and they don't need to fly around anywhere at all because they're just there to mate and lay eggs in the soil. The method that I've been using up until now, which works quite well, but is a bit more time consuming and messy is hydrogen peroxide mixed with water and diatomaceous earth. Hydrogen peroxide kills fungus gnat larvae on contact, but you don't wanna just dump hydrogen peroxide into your pot and soil mix because it can burn the plant and it can burn the roots. I'm pretty sure you already know what hydrogen peroxide is. Diatomaceous earth is basically like ground up powdered sedimentary rock. It's white, it looks like chalk, chalk powder. And it's like, tiny, tiny shards of glass, basically, to fungus, not larva, and flies. So it'll kill the larva on contact. It'll like dry them up. For the flies, it just kind of gets into all of the cracks and crevices of their body, and it hinders their movement, and they eventually die. It's kind of brutal, but fungus gnats suck, so. So if you want to try that method, First, you want to let all of your potted plants dry out a little bit. Let the soil dry out. That's already going to reduce the infestation somewhat because the larva cannot thrive in dry soil. One of the reasons that you can develop an infestation is through overwatering because they thrive in moist soil. Then you'll take 3% hydrogen peroxide and mix one part of that hydrogen peroxide with four parts water and water all of your potted plants with that. And that will kill the larva on contact. So that's already like wiping out one life cycle of the, the fungus gnat infestation. Then after you've done that and you've killed all the larva, you'll want to let the, the top of the soil dry out just a little bit. So maybe let one or two days go by. And then you can sprinkle diatomaceous earth over the top, the entire top of the soil. And then like kind of rake it into the first inch of soil using a fork. That will ensure, because the larvae are usually like one inch deep in the soil, so that will ensure that you're getting all of the larvae, if there are any larvae remaining, and then that will also ensure that like if the flies want to get into the soil to lay their eggs, they're going to have to crawl through diatomaceous earth and it will kill the flies. When you use diatomaceous earth, you should always use a mask, like that you would buy at the hardware store or something, just to prevent yourself from inhaling it, because it's not good for your lungs. It's, it's not good to inhale this stuff. And it really does, it's like a very fine powder. It will go everywhere. So just protect yourself and wear a mask. So today I'm trying something a little bit different. I ordered beneficial nematodes. If you watch Not Dude's channel, and if you don't, you should check that out. Uh, he recently did a video about beneficial nematodes. He and I are coincidentally trying this out 
for the first time at the same time. Uh, like me, you might have kind of a knee-jerk reaction to introducing nematodes into your home because, like me, you may associate nematodes with parasitic worms, like roundworms that infect your digestive tract or hookworms or pinworms, but that is not what these are. <laughs> Nematoda is a phylum that is very vast, and these are beneficial nematodes. This nematode is Steinernemopheltia, and they feed on the larva of a bunch of really aggravating pests, like flea larva, weevils, borers, Japanese beetles, and fungus gnat larva. So these are helpful for us, and they won't infect your digestive tract or affect your cats or dogs or any of your pets. These nematodes, Steiner nemopheltia, seek out fungus gnat larvae in the soil, enter them through any body orifice that they can. Uh, they kill them within a couple days, they feed on them for a little while, and then they leave behind the carcass and move on to the next one. So super helpful to have in your potted plants because they eat the fungus gnat larva and they destroy the life cycle of the fungus gnat. So if you do want to give beneficial nematodes a try, you will probably, you can either go to the, maybe they have them at your garden center, but I had to order mine online. You don't want to order them in like the hottest heat of the summer or when temperatures are well below freezing because it could destroy them in transport. Um, they're meant to be kept between 4 degrees and 10 degrees Celsius, which is like 40 degrees Fahrenheit to 50 degrees Fahrenheit. You're, the instructions say to keep them in the fridge when they arrive. You're supposed to do it in the darkest setting possible. Light is apparently harmful to nematodes, so for the best survival rate, you want to do it like in the evening when it's dark outside, and then you can turn the lights off and go to bed and have sweet, sweet dreams of dead fungus gnat larva. When you get your beneficial nematode powder in the mail or from the garden center, it should come with instructions that tell you how much powder to use with how much water. So read those instructions. And then the first thing you want to do is water all of your house plants to make sure that the soil is evenly moist. Then mix up your water and beneficial nematode solution. Water the top of the plants to make sure that you've covered the entirety, like the entire surface, but you don't have to like dump a bucket of it in all of your potted plants. Give it like a few minutes and then re-water all of your plants with regular water again to make sure that the water like pulls the beneficial nematodes down throughout the soil and uh, you know, it's, it's evenly dispersed and then turn the lights off and go to bed. You can also use those sticky traps to capture the adult flies. Uh, that might speed up the process a little bit because you're killing two members of the life cycle in one fell swoop. I personally don't like the sticky traps because they gross me out. I like the idea of beneficial nematodes a lot because it's less messy than the diatomaceous earth method. It seems more efficient and it's something that I can do before bed and forget about. In my opinion, those are the two most effective methods of getting rid of fungus gnats, according to the literature I've read online, other people's experiences, and my own experience with the peroxide. I'll obviously keep you updated and let you know if the beneficial nematodes have worked for me. I'll give you an update in one or two weeks and let you know if I still have fungus gnats flying around. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that you enjoyed this. I hope it was helpful, interesting, a little entertaining maybe. If you have comments or questions or suggestions for future videos, leave it in the comments below. I will get back to you. I'd love to hear from you. If you want to see other videos about plants and plant care, check out my channel. I try to put out like one video a week, so if you subscribe, you can depend on me to put out that, uh, put out that content about plants and plant care. Thank you again. I hope you have a wonderful day and I'll see you soon.